What do you make of those text messages? Well, look, the endemic corruption that is rife in the Victorian branch of the Labor Party, and it comes less than a year after very similar allegations about the New South Wales branch of the Labor Party, shows very clearly that this is a national problem for the Australian Labor Party. And Anthony Albanese has got to be clear and transparent about what he knew, what his colleagues knew, how involved federal MPs were, uh, and make sure that uh, this type of corruption is rooted out of the Australian Labor Party. Should Anthony Byrne stay in his position as Deputy Chair of the Parliamentary Joint Committee on Intelligence and Security? Well, we need transparency first from Anthony Byrne, from Anthony Albanese uh, and from the Australian Labor Party. And uh, let's see, hear from them exactly what all of them knew, exactly how involved they were. I mean, you look at those comments about Dan Andrews, the Labor Premier of Victoria, uh, and you've got a federal Labor MP uh, wishing upon Dan Andrews his political death. Now, uh, obviously, this shows a toxic, toxic culture uh, but it also is a part of a bigger picture of corruption within the Labor Party. Should he stay in that position, though, on that committee? Well, I want some transparency and some answers first and foremost okay. before I form a judgment, but, uh, uh, but I think it is very clear uh, that we have real problems at the heart of the Labor Party and, uh, and that there needs to be uh, more than the sort of fobbing off of answers that we've seen to date. OK. Uh, trade deal uh, with the UK. Uh, things are moving in the right direction, no doubt, Minister. But what does this mean for, 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 for the ordinary folks out there in Australia? Does it mean cheaper whisky and cheese? <laughs> well, it will mean that, uh, that some British goods coming to Australia will be cheaper, absolutely. Uh, but it also importantly means that for Australian exporters, uh, they can... Uh, they can head into the UK, a market of 67 million people, and in going there, uh, those farmers, be they grain growers, sheep graziers, winemakers, uh, are key services providers in areas like healthcare and financial services. We want all of them to be able to get better, easier access into the UK market, and because trade underpins one in five Australian jobs, and we want to make sure we keep giving our exporters more choices. Boris Johnson said uh, that he'd like to send Marmite here, so does this mean it's cheaper for us to send it right back? Well, he did, uh, he did say he wants Marmite coming to Australia and Vegemite going to, uh, to the UK. Look, we welcome that. Um, as a country, we have now recorded 28 consecutive monthly trade surpluses. That means that under our government, Australia is routinely exporting more than we import. The trade deals we've done with a number of countries have been a key part of that, uh, and the UK is part of that next wave, and we hope it is a trade deal we can do quickly and efficiently, uh, because ultimately you know, we have a common rule of, uh, of law and legal systems and structures, shared democratic values, common language, and uh, this is a trade deal we should be able to get on and get done. He also mentioned that boomerangs are made in the UK and sent here. Why is that? And are you surprised? I was surprised. I have since been told that, uh, that these are not Indigenous artefacts, but in fact it's apparently some toy that is called a boomerang. So uh, I haven't okay. quite found one yet and I'll, uh, I'll have to go out and take a look, but, uh, uh, but I think we should be, uh, be clear there. OK, all right. Uh, Minister, uh, on to travel. When might Australians be able to travel overseas? For holiday purposes, uh, not for some time, and nor are we going to see international visitors coming to Australia for holiday purposes yeah. for some time. And uh, that's a devastating blow, I know, for much of our tourism industry. Uh, but we need to encourage Australians to travel at home. That's what can best support tourism businesses and tourism jobs uh, across Australia, uh, particularly when you look at the fact that Australians spend $20 billion more leaving the country each year that international visitors coming to Australia usually spend here. So uh, there's a lot of surplus that can be spent and invested by Australians in our tourism industry, which yeah. is one of the reasons why we need to see states open up their borders to let people travel. When you say some time, though, what does that mean? Next year and what part of next year? I think it is more likely to be next year. It's impossible to put a fixed time frame on it as yet. Mm. Uh, having those international border restrictions has been a core pillar, quite possibly the most important part of keeping Australia safe mm. uh, in the handling of coronavirus. Uh, and so we cannot risk exposing ourselves uh, to a massive outbreak that would cause the need for another shutdown of domestic economic activity uh, and would then decimate uh, jobs and businesses mm. even further. So. I know this is a tough time. 
for tourism businesses and we're going to do the best we can to get Australians to fill that tourism activity across Australia. And I know it's a tough time for those who want to go overseas to visit loved ones and, uh, and to undertake those sorts of trips. And we're going to work carefully through all of those issues, uh, but I can't raise false hope that there's going to be some sort of open border arrangement for free travel again uh, during the course of this year. Sure. I think that's highly unlikely. There's no doubt. I mean, you've got another outbreak in Beijing. You've got these uh, 15 cases uh, in Melbourne yesterday um, but from overseas travellers. So uh, would that be the same for, for travellers coming here? I mean, how long will travellers be in hotel quarantine for? So I think that 14-day quarantine remains a very important protection for Australia. Uh, we can have a look and we'll have a look under targeted pilots at how we can extend uh, application of that uh, to international students and so that we can potentially run pilots that get international students coming back here, mm. going into that same fixed mandatory quarantine where they pose next to no risk to the Australian public uh, and then we can actually uh, maintain that part of our uh, our economy. It's a big part of our export industry. And so we're looking carefully at how we can do those sorts of things where it's viable. And obviously, if somebody is going to be here uh, for one, two, three years, uh, then it is clearly viable uh, for them to potentially spend 14 days in quarantine first. But if you're coming for a three or four week holiday, uh, you're not going to spend do it if you've got to spend 14 days uh, locked in a hotel room to start with.